What's up everybody? It's uh, How To Marine here and you know, I was on the base today thinking as I was bored out of my freaking mind, what would happen if you put a taser in water? Would it shock you or would it do anything at all? So I got home and I'm like, well hell, why should I make a video out of that? So today I actually have two tasers. Um, I got your conventional taser that uh, you're going to find in pretty much every tactical store or really anywhere. Um, so I got that one and then this one actually is a homemade taser out of a disposable camera. And I have another video if you click the link I can show you how to make this. They're actually pretty cool. They only cost a few bucks and as you can see they uh, they actually pack a little punch. They're nothing special, nothing, not like a million volts but they'll give you good shock. So today we're going to find out what exactly happens when I put my hand in this water and then I tase the water. All right, so let's take a look. All right, so I'm gonna start with the conventional taser that you can buy at any tactical store. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know exactly what this is gonna do. It could be very unpleasant and it might not do anything at all. So, all right, here we go. Just gonna put that in there, put that in there. Holy crap. It does absolutely nothing. In fact, now that the taser's wet, it doesn't even work. Look at that. Dang. Well, there you go. That is what happens when a normal taser goes in water. It doesn't do a single thing. So how a taser works is it's a localized electric shock that travels between the two poles. So the shock is going to go between this metal side and that metal side, which is why you want to taste somebody in the neck or near the brain because that's actually what's going to knock them out. Um, in fact, I know why it's not zapping. The reason this taser isn't zapping is because the water is acting as a conduit. And so normally it arcs through the air, but water is a much more transferable conduit than air. Therefore, the electricity is simply traveling on the surface level between the two poles. All right, so that's the conventional taser. So now the homemade taser actually has a little bit of a different shock. Um, it has more amperage, which means it could cause more physical damage. However, the voltage is not going to be nearly as high. So I doubt this one will do anything either. It's probably going to do the exact same thing. It's probably just going to jump from one pole to the other. But hey, let's give it a try. So let's make sure it's actually charged up. All right, so it's got a nice little charge there. Um, so let's see. Let's charge it up for a second. Got to charge it up there. All right, it's ready to go. Put this in here. So theoretically, it should zap me, but I'll bet you it won't. Either that or I'll jump back and swear a lot. All right. As I suspected, it is not doing a single thing to me. And it's fully charged. It's not doing a single thing, but watch this. Yeah, so it's charged up. But it is not shocking me because the electricity is traveling between the two poles. And in the water it's gonna be traveling between the area of the water where the poles are touching and not going to anywhere else. This is actually the same physics concept is this is the reason squirrels can run on high wires and not get hurt because they're not acting as a conduit for anything. You can actually be walking on high lines yourself and as long as you don't touch the two poles together, the electricity doesn't give a crap. It's not gonna go through you. So there you go. If you touch a wet area, or if you are near a wet area, and you hit it with a taser, it will not do a single thing to you. All right, well, hey, like, subscribe, questions, comments. If you want to see how to build this taser right here, check out my other video. Have a great day.